Welcome back to the James Swanick Show. It's been two years and two months since our last episode. And wow, has the world changed or what? We're in the middle of the coronavirus quarantine shutdown, whatever phraseology you want to use there. And uh, yeah, life as we know it has changed unbelievably since uh, two years and two months ago. Uh, we're going to get straight into the Ty Lopez interview, but just before uh, I do, just a couple of little things. So I'm in Brisbane, Australia at the moment. I've been living between Los Angeles and uh, and Brisbane, Australia, but when the coronavirus hit, I decided I was just going to spend time here in Brisbane. I'm here in um, uh, Tim Galper in the uh, one of the inner city suburbs of Brisbane on the east coast of Australia, and uh you know, it's a crazy time. Obviously, there's social distancing going on. I'm keeping fit as much as I can. I've ordered an in-home uh, or an at-home gym. Um, starting to lift some weights again, finally. I've been uh, running in the park and uh, lifting myself up on children's playgrounds before they banned actually even being able to go into the children's playground, doing push-ups and sit-ups and things like that, and just trying to stay active. Um Thankfully, none of my um, family members have had COVID-19. One of my good friends actually had COVID-19. Thankfully, she's now better and recovered and she's well. She was, she's in her 30s, so the, I guess the life-threatening um, danger of that wasn't great. So I'm so happy and blessed that she is, uh, has recovered and is well. And, um, you know, in this interview with Ty Lopez here, Ty really talks about where he sees business going, um, the stock market, um, uh, how to stay healthy, how to stay fit, um, what friends you should have around you, what friends you shouldn't have around you. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd love for you to uh, share this, uh, share this episode, like or subscribe if you're watching on the YouTube channel. A couple of places you can find me. I'm on Instagram at, at James Swanick. YouTube channel is James Swanick. Uh, Facebook page, um, Alcohol Freedom Formula, if you're into um, wanting to quit drinking. Obviously, I've still got the Swannies Blue Light Blocking Glasses business. I'm wearing these Blue Light Blocking Glasses here now. You can check that out at swanwicksleep.com. Send me a DM on Instagram. might be the easiest way because um, uh, I tend to reply to most people there. And, uh, yeah, enjoy this first episode back after two and a half years or two years and two months being away from the podcast. Enjoy this uh, episode now with Ty Lopez. I want to introduce you now to our next speaker and our next guest. Uh, and let me just introduce him by saying, saying this. I, I met Ty back in 2013. Um, went over to his house, played a little bit of backyard basketball with him. We were introduced through, um, we were in a mastermind group together at the time. And then I remember not long after, I, I went and did this 10-day silent meditation called Vipassana. And when I was in this 10-day silent meditation, uh, one of the things that I that came up for me was like, oh, I really like that Ty Lopez guy and I really like his cousin Maya. When I get out of this 10-day silent meditation, I want to actually spend some more time with those with those two because they were, they were good people. I liked them. And then about four days after I got out, Ty texted me and said, oh, I'm having a little a two-day event in my place up in the Hollywood Hills. Would you like to come? And at the time, I wasn't making much money. In fact, I was hardly making any money at all. I was trying to figure out how to build a business and to, to come to Ty's event. I, from memory, I think it was about $1,500 to do it. And I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm the guy who's used to going to conferences for free and knowing all these people who invite me for free. And I'm like, oh, am I really going to drop the $1,500 to do this? And I did. And then not, not only did I drop the $1,500 to go and be in that room and to hear him speak for two days, at the end of it, he said, oh, by the way, I'm happy to coach anyone here for 18 months. It's twenty five grand." who he is interested. And my, I remember my hand going up like this. It was like I was, I, was, I was mentally trying to keep my arm down, but at the same time, something was just compelling me to put my arm up. And I did. And uh, I didn't have the 25 grand. <laughs> I just like put my hand up. I'm like, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to do this because I was just, you know, I've been trying to figure it out on my own without a coach and without a mentor and I was struggling. And I ended up transferring uh, 25,000 US dollars, which was about 32,000 Australian dollars at the time, um, because the exchange rate kind of killed me, um, from my St. George bank account in Queensland to Ty's Bank of America account in, uh, uh, in California. Um, it was on Halloween, actually, it was October 31st, 2013. And my dad, I remember at the time saying, 
Who is this online guru you're spending your money with? Who is this scam artist guru? So he really did, did not approve of this investment. Um, but I have to say now, and, and, I, and I knew right away, I mean, I felt terrific about the investment at the time. And now, 2027 years later, I can now look back with confidence and say it was single-handedly the greatest investment that I ever made because I've created two really great companies that I love that really help and support people. The reason that all of you are on the call right now is because of one of those companies. I'm coaching people, helping people quit drinking, helping people sleep better. I've met wonderful people, including Mark Dharma, who's on the call now, who I said inspired the whole idea of me uh, or introduced me to the blue light blocking glasses business idea. And, uh, you know, Ty was, Ty was good to his word. He coached me, he supported me. That led to me um, being uh, a salesperson for him in 2015. And I, I sold um, some of his programs over the phone for about, uh, about a year or a year and a half. I spoke on his stages. Uh, I got to meet all of his family. And it, and it kind of progressed from, you know, a mentor-mentee relationship to now I consider Ty just a wonderful friend, first and foremost. And, you know, I've seen how he is with his, um, with his family. I've seen how he is with his team. Like he's built an amazing company culture within his organization, and he builds businesses that genuinely help people. And I think that's one of the things that he gets um, misunderstood for because a lot of people look at him and say, well, there's Lamborghinis and there's pretty girls and some of his Instagram videos and things like that. That's actually genius, and I'll have him explain that um, a little bit later on. But he's so much more than that. I mean, he's probably inspired, I would say, 100,000 people to just pick up a book and read. And, and he taught me the art of reading a book a day. And that, if I only took that from him, that has just propelled, propelled me through life, um, just from, by being able to digest knowledge in a very qu quick, digestible uh, manner. And, you know, he's created millionaires. Uh, he's, he's given hundreds of thousands of dollars to charities. He only builds businesses that help people. I'm an investor now in four of his businesses. Um, um, and he is an advisor to my uh, sleep company and he's just an all around good person and the people that he surrounds himself are really good people as well. And some of them are just, you know, will be, I hope lifelong friends. Um, and Ty, I just wanted to throw over to you now and just say, thank you so much for giving your time and for, sh um, for sharing your expertise here on the call today. I know everyone's excited to, to hear from you and, uh, yeah, I, I thank you for your mentorship. I thank you for your friendship and, uh, over to you. Well, thanks. I appreciate it, man. It's been a long, it's been a long ride here, James. We've known each other coming up on a decade. I was getting close. So it has to be. So uh, I appreciate you having me here. And yeah, I'm thankful for the friendship and and uh, enjoy watching all the stuff you're building here. So glad to be a part today uh, of the new world of coronavirus conferences. Zoom. Um, for those of you who have been betting on e-commerce, thank God that you bet on e-com. For those of you who have bet on some other paths, um, it's time to, to make the switch to e-com or double down. Um, so I'll just, I, I want to do some questions and answers, but what, one of the things that I'll just say kind of out the gate to kind of jump into some, what I'm seeing in the world. Um, so I, I now, so I start businesses from scratch or, or, you know, we've got different businesses, but I also now uh, in the last couple of years have started doing some M and a transaction stuff. So buying or bidding on big companies, some of them, the bids we win and some we lose. I, I bid on uh, American, uh, sorry, not American but forever 21 in January. Um, I didn't win the bin as a $3.5 billion revenue company. Simon properties won which is a very large company, if you know who they are. But so I've kind of been pulling back the curtain, not just on entrepreneurs like we are, but also how big corporations are working, forecasting the future of, of you know, business, I guess we could say. So um, what I, to summarize, to give you the short version, abandon the ships if they're not e-com and go e-com. Now, I've been saying this for a while, but now I can say it with infinite more, uh, infinitely more kind of certainty. 
So for example, um, bought a company called Dress Barn in October. It's a clothing company. It's a 57 year old brand. It, 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 I'm going to share my screen too. I've got some of this. I, that way you don't have to just look at my face. That'll get boring to look at me for too long here. I'm not a model like James and Mark. Um, so here is a, oops. I'm on my farm, by the way, I'm on a farm. I'm not in a big city right now. I'm in Virginia. Um, so if my internet's a tad bit slow, bear with me. I've got a satellite dish here. So this is a company that was closed going, well, they weren't going bankrupt yet. I, this wasn't a bankruptcy auction, but I bought them from a Cena publicly traded company. Here's a little blurb that I did. And uh, they did 740 million in revenue last year. We shut down the stores and went all e-com. A lot of people thought we're crazy. Uh, in that industry, the clothing industry, it's a very large, you know, basically a trillion dollar industry if you look globally. Um, people are watching us. And who are these whippersnappers coming in and shutting down 650 department stores? Even though companies realize they need to shut down stores, they're not shutting all their stores. They're reducing. So, for example, Forever, uh, Forever 21, their new plan was to go from 500, 600 stores to cut down to around two to three, maybe 400 stores. So just a 30, 40, 50% reduction. So for everyone on here, I'll get to know you guys, hopefully, as we talk. But I guess I'll just start by saying, the future is here. Um, I don't think I, you know, just to speak on this particular situation, which is coronavirus in and of itself, I think the way, so let's think about the last big scare in the U S now, when I started, I had a, my, my second mentor was this guy named Alan nation. I was, um, around, 19 years old. And one of the first lessons I ever remember him telling me is he said, Ty, every single 12 to 20, uh, sorry, eight to 12 year cycle, you're going to experience some form of a recession. Now, if you've been studying, I actually have a little slide. Let me, I did another talk on this. Let me see if I can find it and I will share it with you guys. This is a presentation that I did. I'll just share one one slide from it that I think you guys might get some value. But um, I'm a student of business history and there's been 47 U.S. recessions. A little hard to exactly count, but kind of the common number is 47. This will be, we are in the 48th, by the way. This is a recession. It, it, it is, remember recessions lag, right? You need two quarters of contraction um, and which we, we will have. Okay, there's no if and or buts. Uh, the Vegas odds, by the way, on on the, whether it will be a recession is around 97. percent So <laughs> um, that's a pretty that's a pretty solid Vegas odds. And but there've been 47, it's 48. The last one was 12 years ago. Started in uh, 2008. Technically, it ended in March 2009, I think, but it lingered for years. Now, here's an important thing for everyone to understand. Business is psychology. If you really want to be a good entrepreneur, every good entrepreneur at their core, whether it be Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Bill Gates, at their core, they're really psychologists. And people don't realize that because you have to be able to tap into consumer sentiment. So you can see Mark Zuckerberg's talent. As a psychologist, he realized in about 2010, 2011, that Facebook was losing ground and that he should spend $1 billion on Instagram. 2012, pretty ballsy move. And then he bought WhatsApp. He understood this consumer sentiment. So important for everybody here when we talk about recession to understand it doesn't matter whether you believe the coronavirus is legitimately uh, worth shutting down the U.S. economy or global economy. It doesn't matter. Forget our politics for a second. What is happening is similar to what happened in 08. An entire generation is forever traumatized. So before 2008, the American dream was what? The American dream was home ownership. I have a lady who works for me who, um, and she 
moved from Cuba. And last month she, tr- she was about to close on a house and I told her, hold off. It's a good thing she listened to me because now real estate prices are going to plummet by fall. But, but for her coming to America from Cuba, American dream was buying a house. But in 08, the trauma, 6 million people losing their homes, forever changed the younger generation's perception of home. And now no younger generation person that I know gives a shit about home, home ownership at all. I mean, I don't meet one person, sub 30 year old, that thinks it's important to buy a home. So what happens is whether 2008 was actually that bad or not, doesn't matter. It's scarred a generation. What you're seeing 12 years later, recessions come every eight to 12 years in the modern world. You are seeing what I put, believe will be a permanent scarring in a generation. So people will be less likely. Cruise lines are going to be a thing of the past. Now, they may revive in some form of fashion, just like home ownership has revived. It's not like nobody buys homes, but there's a shift in a whole generation's appetite for buying homes because of 2008. In the world we live in now, the shift is going to be away from live music concerts with 18,000 people in one building. It's going to be away from um, shopping centers where you're packed in in an enclosed shopping center with you know thousands of people walking. It's going to be a little bit of even an airfare. Um, going to Walt Disney World. Movie theaters. I think AMC may not survive. The, the founder of AMC lived on my block in, in LA in Beverly Hills. He was a very wealthy guy. I think he sold it, but I don't think AMC is going to make it through. The largest movie chain. People are going to now, that shift was already happening with Netflix, but this is the you know, nail on the coffin, so to speak. So for each person on this call, you know, when we talk about you know, the four pillars of the good life, it's something I've been talking about for a long time, health, wealth, love, happiness. I kind of started with the second pillar, wealth, just because this is an entrepreneurial forum, lean forum, I would guess. We got to go forget if we were 80 or 90 percent behind e-com now's the time to go to 110 percent if you were thinking of building a business that had a physical component to it like you were going to build a restaurant chain that also allowed home delivery forget the restaurant just do the home delivery have the kitchens behind the scenes um here's something interesting i'll show you this let me share my screen one more time. Hold on here. Okay. Uh, here is something. This is, I'm not sure when. I posted this, I think, February 28th. Let me go here. And I just want to show you an example of a business. I tried to buy Blue Apron in February. I made a move. The Washington Post, uh, New York Post wrote about it. And then before I could close on it, because they were doing very poorly, a $2 billion brand, Blue Apron, had dropped. Its market cap was $25 million. Okay? So it had fallen from grace 80x. Okay? And I, because I believe in doubling down on e I was like, no, this business has legs. It just needs the management is kind of poor. So here, I think, is this article. Um, the reason I'm showing you this is, you know what happened to this company because of coronavirus? Let's look at their stock real fast. Let's just look here. Blue Apron. Oops. Okay. So if you look at the rise of it, by the way, if you had made a stock trade, when you saw my article, would have been a good time to make one. You would have, you would have made about eight X on your money. Now it's dropped recently, but look, watch this last. Well, let's look at the last six months. I'll show you. So here, let me change the six months. Okay, right here is when I was trying to buy it. It was at two dollars and ten cents a share. It peaked here March eighteenth. March eighteenth, by the way, who knows what happened on March eighteenth? That was the damn worst day in stock tra- in the stock market 
I mean, March 18th, everything plummeted. That blue apron went to 16 bucks. Went to $16 on the worst day, or arguably worse than 1929. That's what I'm saying. The e com revolution is here. Blue apron, no restaurants, food delivered to your door. Now, they still have intrinsic problems in the business model because they lose money on every meal that they ship. But this is how you need to be thinking. In the Blue Apron world, in the Netflix world, not in the Blockbuster world, not in the you know shopping center world, even real estate. Let me let me briefly talk about real estate because probably some of you are real estate investors. Um, so ideally, everybody on this call had been buying real estate in 2008, 2009, 2010. As Warren Buffett says, when everybody's fearful, you should be greedy. And when everybody's uh, greedy, you should be fearful. 2008, 9, 10, everybody was fearful. I hope each of you were greedy and picked up, you could pick up houses in Las Vegas for $15,000. You could literally buy for 10 million bucks. You could put, you could put together a portfolio of rental properties for $10 million and then, I mean, your cash flow would be just bazonko. I would be, it would, well, think about it. Let's say you could average 25 grand a house. So you can buy 40 houses per million. 10 million, if you use leverage, was not out. It was a little hard to leverage then, but I'm just saying, hypothetically, you buy 400 single family homes, all in Vegas. And, um, and I'm oversimplifying. It wouldn't have been this easy, but just go with me here. And let's just say by now, I mean, 25,000, you instantly have positive cash flow, but let's say you're renting them out for 700 bucks a piece. Oh, let's just say a thousand. You'd have $400,000 a month cash flow from a $10 million investment. That's a 48% ROI on your money. But unfortunately, what's everybody been doing with real estate? Buying real estate in the last three years because every person on Instagram and like, you can't lose money in real estate, but you can't lose money in real estate and people will lose money. And there is no asset class that you can't lose money in. And the second you hear somebody say there's an asset class, you can't lose money. Stop. They lose all credibility. Just move on. It's like, if you meet somebody that says, you know, they believe they're Jesus Christ, just move on. It's like, they got mental problems. They're, they're ill-informed. So 2016, 17, 18, 19, everybody's been buying real estate. Now we find ourselves in 2020 and boy, there's hell to pay. When you are greedy, when everyone else is greedy, my friend, unfortunately, the law of the jungle is you will be punished. And I wish it wasn't that way. It's not my law. It's, I call the law of the jungle, the rules of life and the rules of business. So if you bought real estate in the last three years, um, just be prepared, be prepared. Hopefully nobody leveraged themselves out too much. There can be capital calls from banks. There can be all kinds of weird things that happen, but the opportunity will be shortly coming in the next uh, six months. It's hard to predict exact dates, but we're real people are going to have to offload multifamily properties, all kinds of stuff. And uh, that should be your time to be in acquisition mode. You got to go, you got to be a contrarian to make money. So, okay. That was a little talk on the second pillar, health, wealth, love, happiness. I'll try to talk a little bit on all four because James said this is, you know, the theme is balance and stuff like that. Just Any un- questions? Share your screen as well. Just on the second. Just unshare your Sorry, screen. again? We're not stuck on the, the blue apron. Yes. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So any questions on anything related to business? It doesn't have to be about what I talked about. I'm trying to break this up and talk, you know, for yep. 15 or 20 minutes on Dave each Kelly. of the four subjects. Dave Kelly, ask your question. Ty, um, given that the last couple of recessions, that there's the uh, drop in the stock market's taken, you know, has happened over, you know, 12 to 18 months in the case of the financial crisis. 
you just mentioned April then as a good time to buy. Are you saying there that April, you believe, was is the time the market will bottom out or that it's just going to offer uh, like the first round of um, cheap pricing? So the stock market, <clears throat> yeah, I was talking a little bit more on real estate, I think will be this fall in like October. The stock mm-hmm. market, here's, be careful. I think there's a what's called a bull trap happening. So the stock market mm-hmm. dropped. And now the government's putting money in in the U.S., fiscal stimulus. And you've seen the markets come up a little bit. Mm. There's a lot of retail money jumping into the stock market because people are greedy and they're going, ooh, you know, there's volatility. And then my friend told me to buy Delta stock and then shot up or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. I think there's going to be a big one more big correction is my guess that could happen in the next three months, meaning so the the Dow Jones went to eighteen thousands around there. I think it potentially goes to fifteen thousand. Like a precipitous freakout is mm-hmm. still there. So my advice on the markets is it's a little tricky to time it. Um, I think that just be careful if it goes up over the next month or two that you don't keep buy 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 buy. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to drop again. So. Mm-hmm. You can buy a little now, but also I think be prepared for another drop, that significant drop, not a, I think what we're experiencing now, people still don't quite get it. They're going, just, just let's think about this, what in the world, let's just take one step back. To understand the stock market is just basically a consortium of businesses spread across the U.S., small, medium, and large. We've got about. 18 to 30% unemployment realistically. Not everybody's filed unemployment, but it's high. Um, where are these people going to go? Let's think of the reverberations. What's the first thing people, what's people's biggest bills? The average person, it's rent or mortgage. Okay. So first thing people are going to start cutting, they're going to move back in with their mom and they're going to stop paying their landlord or stop paying the mortgage. So foreclosures have actually been stopped. Evictions in New York You can't evict for the next 90 days. The problem with that is all these landlords that use leverage to buy the property, uh, they can't go 90 days without receiving rent. Mm -hmm. So I think a domino is going to start to happen, starting with people not being able to pay rent. It's already happening in commercial real estate. These land, like Cheesecake Factory said, they're not going to pay rent to anybody. Imagine losing Cheesecake Factory. This is a core tenant across a portfolio of thousands or what, I don't know how many stores they have, but they're a big, you know, they're a anchor tenant. So they don't pay. And so that there it begins. It's funny. It may begin with real estate, just like 2008 again. So I think here's what I think you should be doing. Play the stock market a little bit. Focus right now on building e-commerce brands. This is, this is my advice to e So, I was doing a live call for some people in my VIP program. And let me just show you something. I stumbled across something. I think this is going to give you guys a real concrete thing that can be done right now. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm just going to show you something kind of cool. So if we go in here, what's food that, what's the most common thing people need now? They're having delivered food, right? So food, shelter, water. Most people have shelter still and most people have water, but they, they need food. So, Let's just say dried beans, lentils, faba beans, whatever. So you want to stock up on beans. All right. So you go, Google has these shopping results, okay? These are people who bid on. I'm just going to go into Google Shopping. All right. So we see these companies. Okay. Rebel Smuggling Galactic Emporium. Okay. Look, they're in here like five. So let me just click on Rebel Jack Rabbit Great Northern Beans. Okay, pull this sucker up. It's fascinating because I basically pieced together. I think one kid in India is making like a million dollars a week because I, as far as I can tell, these are I know how to tell when sites are linked together. He's done a good job of hiding them and making them look like separate companies, but I'm not that easy to fool. So this template here. I'm not sure it's on Shopify. I don't think it is. If you go to one simple tool, if you go to the about page and it doesn't have a photo, uh, 
it's oftentimes offshore company because, and one of these websites has horrible English. And um, it, it literally sounds like somebody used Google Translate to create their About Us page. So this is a random faceless person. He got a little fake office in Stockton, California. And he's look at all the things he has. I mean, this guy, and he's showing up number one on Google Shopping. So going back to my beans thing here, look, out of stock is <laughs> how much. It wasn't out of stock two days ago, three days ago when I looked. So this guy has built Galactic Aporid. If you go into herbs, like, I don't know, what's an herb you might want? Uh, turmeric. Okay. A lot of people, it's like anti-inflammatory. A lot of people are trying to self-dose and things like that. Let me see if I can find this guy's. Well, let's just click on one of these. A quality organic. I looked through like eight links and it was all this same person. And I was like, I called my business partner, Alex. I said, Oh my God. Yeah. This is probably the same thing too. This is it's just like these generic sites. People are popping up. They're drop shipping food. And let me see something. Let's just go and uh, Okay, this one's a little different. So that's good. Finally, I found one site. This is actually looks like Shopify. But here's a dude. I don't know who that... And I guarantee you this business is not... Okay, in 1977, he started a small store. But that was not when he went online. So this opportunity to just come in here, don't be intimidated by these guys. Herbs right now, you come in... Let me find another one. Smarter Curcumin. Somebody made a domain name just for the herb. Somebody's buying $8 domain name. They see their volume on Curcumin. They make a site just on Curcumin. And once again, people are buying everything right now. So here's a company I own uh, right here. Let me refresh. It's called Farmer's Box. And this, let me refresh it. It's just crushing it to the extent that I, I don't know. Me and Alex, I've never seen a business grow this fast. It's wild. I mean, we can't even get supply as our own. If we didn't have supply, like we think we could do like $500,000 a day right now. A million bucks a day. You'd have a $300 million revenue company right now. Maybe not 300 million, but a hundred million is not weird. Out the gate from start. Zero to 100 million. This is a business we launched a few years ago, but we didn't actually launch it. We just built it and we ran out of time. And so we, have, we just launched it really to, with ads two weeks ago. And now we got new prepared meals. I haven't even seen this. It looks kind of nice. So here's an example of just going all in on e com food delivered to your door. So, by the way, my definition of e com is. There's no physical store experience, just so you know, because sometimes people get confused as to what e-commerce is. So you can sell pencils. In a way, even this video conference that James is doing, I consider this e-commerce. So Zoom consulting, e-com. No building, no physical. We don't need to meet at Starbucks. We don't need to meet at an office. Pure, that's pure e-com. Okay, one or two more questions. I hope that didn't it didn't exactly. I, I the stock market one is such a complex one. We'd have to have another long talk. But but uh, I think he, I think the stock market gets worse before it gets better. Is what I'm trying to say. Any other? Okay, here Anthony Silva DM or chatted. Ty, how can we pivot our marketing to increase or keep our sales consistent, regardless of the fear of spreading spending caused by Corona? Okay, the good news is. Ad rates on Facebook and YouTube are plummeting by the day. So Facebook and, and Google are basically a modified auction system. I saw this in, nine, in 2008 where it was I'm, the recession came in 08 and my businesses did better than they'd ever done before. And I couldn't figure out why. And I realized, what's the first thing Carnival Cruise Line cut when they got hit with this coronavirus? You think they spent any money on branding videos on Facebook? Zoop. What do you think is the first thing that, um, what's another bit? Delta Airlines. 
You think they're running a lot of commercials right now? No. So that Facebook auction warehouse of space for you to get, the costs have gone down literally. Oh, I think it's about 50% down now. And it may go deeper. So this is your chance to get your Facebook and YouTube ads going too. Ty, what's going to happen to the legal professional field? Kimberly Craven asks. Great question. So we, if you're in that business, it's like, how can I go in all e -com? How can I make my website and my branding? I don't know what type of law that you practice, but let's say I'm a lawyer and I practice, I don't know, business, basic business, general business. I help people form LLCs. I'm building an ad. I'm building a funnel on my website. I'm rebranding my logo. So it's a, you know, Ty Lopez, the Zoom lawyer or something like that. <laughs> the virtual lawyer. That's what I'm building out. And I'm like, listen, I don't have fancy offices. I partner with the best l lawyers around. We don't have, you know, most law firms have big skyscrapers. You're paying that for that in the fees. I'm Ty Lopez, the virtual lawyer. I charge, you know, a flat fee. There's a lawyer I work with that I love that does some of my law and some of my business. He charges $2,000 a month flat fee. Talk to him as much as you want. I get his WhatsApp. I get his phone. Never met the guy in person. I have other high-powered lawyers that I've been at their skyscraper in downtown LA going, wow, now I know where all my fees go to. They have like the top floor of the tallest building in downtown LA. So that's your opportunity. You're the e-com. I mean, sorry, you're the virtual. Another one, you're a lawyer. Switch to e-com law. People need their terms and service condition change. They need their compliance. They need their website overhaul. So I'm, I'm just switching to this. Remember, the, my favorite saying is it's not the smartest or the strongest who survive. It's the most adaptable. Um, let me do a real speed round, then I'm going to switch to topics. Stance on the future of crypto industry. Crypto, the problem with crypto is nobody's really building block. People took a lot of money in ICOs and then just ran with the money. What happened with the $1.3 that people put into the Telegram ICO? gone. People stole. The problem is there's a lot of theft in that industry. So I still like crypto. I still, but I'm not putting all my money in crypto. I never did. I never put all my money in anything. So, so you know, I didn't go to college. So I, I, I have to rely on non-fancy business things like buy low, sell high. That's the extent of my business experience. Or don't put all your eggs in one basket. I have a lot of people I deal with. I was just in the ivory towers in Manhattan with one of the biggest private equity guys. These guys manage the Yale endowment fund, 7 billion and they're highfalutin and I'm just like, but they're hurting right now. So just remember sometimes simplicity laughs last. Okay. So I think crypto, yeah, don't, don't go all in on crypto, but I, I like Bitcoin the best. has the best brand name. Do I like MLM companies that are e-com? Yes. I have thought of, I've been, for the last five years, I've been thinking of dipping my, my foot in MLM just because I don't think it's that bad. I think it gets a bad name. The main place people go wrong in network marketing is expecting that they're going to make a million dollars in two years. Most people make zero or whatever, but I think it's a great way. If you don't know what to do, one of the things Joel Salatin used to tell me, when you don't know what to do, do anything, even if it turns out to be the wrong thing. Momentum, momentum. If I was unemployed right now or I was entrepreneur, didn't know what to do, I'd join some MLM just as a part-time thing, just for the camaraderie, the business training. And most MLMs cost $200 to get in. College, Stern Business School at NYU is the biggest damn fraud I've ever seen now that I've looked. It's $30,000. I know this girl and I was like, can I see your curriculum? So she's like second or third year. She shows it. She's doing her homework. I go, do you actually know? understand one, con it was about balance sheets, statement of cash flow, uh, P and L's. She's like, no, I just cut and paste. I like Google it. So I'm like, you're just sitting here doing hours of homework. No concept. I was like, do you know what a balance sheet is? She's like, no idea. And I go, how much is this degree? She's like 30 grand. I was like, well, thank God you're only spending 30 grand. She goes, no, it's 30 grand a year. By the way, colleges are going to get smashed through this thing. People aren't going to be able to pay college. I'm working on a competitor to college, uh, an accredited college we're trying to do, but that's another long story. So MLM, great cheap education thing. 
It doesn't cost you 120000 to get into. Just don't have too high of expectations. You know what Warren Buffett says the secret to good marriages, secret to good business partnership, low expectations. So when you get into MLM with high expectations, you get ruined. Don't have high expectations. Hear about this. Good rule of life. Anything new, don't have high expectations. Sometimes I met this guy who was like, Ty, I met this. I'm, I'm, should I take on this dude as a business partner? I said, how long have you known him? One month. I said, no. The, the basic rule of life is low expectations for anything new in your life. High expect. If you've had a business partner for 10 years, you should have very high expectations. But MLM, low expectations. Crypto hasn't been around that long. Don't have too high of expectations. If it works out better, great. Uh, Tire all of retail businesses in a death spiral. For example, one of my businesses has 10 franchise salons with one-on-one services in a clean, highly hygienic environment, Scott Schubiger. Scott, I'll tell you like The Godfather in the movie, The Godfather. He goes, I work for a man who likes his bad news immediately. So here's my bad news is you're going to have a rough time of it. Um, I don't see people rushing back to salons, although I, I don't see it going to zero either. Just like home ownership didn't go to zero. It's just a shift. So if you were predicting that those franchises would bring you 10000 a month, you need to lower the expectations to 4000 And if it's still a good business for you to be in at 40% of optimum, then you stay in the business. But you just, you can't have high expectations right now in any retail environment. People aren't going to go. Obviously, look, people are going to need haircuts. People are going to need their nails done. When, but I just saw some news. That we might. There, here's my quickest summary. We got two potentials for this coronavirus. One, like some virus, it kind of spontaneously disappears. That happens a lot. I'm on my farm here. Sometimes you'll get parasites that come through, and then they just are gone, and you didn't do anything for them. So best case scenario, this thing spontaneously disappears. If that doesn't happen, this thing going to be around for a while. Today, one of the biggest financial guys died. Uh, I forget the guy's name, the CFO of a huge company. He died. Uh, the German finance minister put his head on the railroad tracks and committed suicide today. Um, Boris Johnson has coronavirus. I mean, this shit ain't going away like we think, even if it's just a little flu, like some people think. So ratchet down expenses as much as you can. Call up your landlords, be like, the world's changed. Force majeure. That's a clause that basically says when shit happens, you can massive events of, you know, of acts of God level that you can go, hey, give me a break. Negotiate, talk to your staff, cut your staff early if you have to. It's better to cut early, unfortunately. Cut early and deeper than you think you need to. And people will understand right now. What are our thoughts on big fitness center going forward compared to small studio? Gyms are going to be tough and nobody going back to a sweaty gym right now. <laughs> I mean, it's like, hey, you want to go around people with bodily fluids on the bench? You were just on sell home fitness equipment. By the way, I'm giving you guys a business tip that I've thought of doing, but I'll let you guys have a head start. Everybody I know, my brothers, I'm like, are you lifting weights? They're like, no, I only have a 30 pound weight at home. Arnold Schwarzenegger made his first million shipping weights, bands. I saw a guy on Instagram with bands, a band workout. His promoted Instagram ad had 6 million views, which means he was able to boost it to 6 million. That's how profitable. Selling bands. Build a band site, the band workout. Hire, if you're not in great shape, all these personal trainers out of work, be like, yo, I'll pay you, you know, a thousand dollars if this business works for you to be the face of this. That kind of thing is why you got to be thinking. Time selling organic gluten free food product, a handful of Whole Foods instead of Amazon Ecom, Connie, FBA now. Uh, you can do Amazon. I would also, yes, I would also do Shopify. I would build both. Dave Kelly, what about blockchain? The problem with blockchain, these guys haven't built blockchain before Corona. No one's ever built anything. So, I think drop shipping is dead. I have a buddy who owns a printing company for e-commerce business. No, it's just dead maybe from coming from China. 
my, I have, you know, dress porn, this company, we ship, we're ship, we're changing our manufacturing from China where the clothes have been made, China, Vietnam, Cambodia, um, Laos, and we're ship, we're shipped into Los Angeles and believe it or not, costs are almost the same. So, um, how do you feel about, in, uh, do you think local buying of food like market gardens are going to increase? Yes. Already has. Uh, CSA, all those food deliveries. How do you feel about industrial real estate, more specific commercial? Re- the only commercial real estate I would touch. I'm going to give you guys a, a tip here that I haven't told anybody before. There's only one kind of commercial real estate to touch right now, in my opinion. Warehouses and distribution. Whoever could, if you own those right now, you can be rich. Rich. Buy up where if you want to put, I don't really recommend putting money in commercial real estate. Don't do it in hotels. Okay. Do not do it in strip malls. Unless you can, I, I looked at a strip mall down the road from me. It sold for 21 million at its peak before Corona was 4 million. It's funny. I told my business partner, Jerome, I said, I'm going to offer this dude $500,000. Now they wouldn't take it pre Corona, but right now they might take, if I get that for 500, it'll be a steal of the century because he makes a million dollars in rent just from uh, McDonald has a pad on there in Red Lobster, which has uh, McDonald has drive through. So it probably I, even if I can buy it for two million. So there's a few commercial real estate. If the price collapses, I would buy. But right now, if you have a friend who has a warehouse that he wants to offload, he doesn't understand what's going to happen. Everybody's going e-com and they're going to need distribution centers. So if you own, it can really be in the middle of nowhere. It's great if you have some in New Jersey, if you have some outside Modesto, California, you know, Fresno, but they'll be everywhere. People are going to be shipping. So that, that is my opinion. I could be totally wrong, but that's where I bet my money right now, without a doubt. Um, and if you own property, see if you can convert it to some kind of distribution, they call them three PLs, three PL. Third-party logistics. That's a great game to be. Great game to be in right now. 3PL. Um, any tips in the medical field, uh, coronavirus vaccine? I would start. You're going to probably get arrested if you say you have a coronavirus vaccine. Build a supplement site that has some supplements that be very careful how you word it. But you, there's a way to word it where you say this helps boost immune system. Supplements go all in on immune system boosting. I have friends doing that, crushing it right now. Uh, what about investing in bicycle companies, alternative to commuting gym memberships? Be careful. Bird scooters is probably going to go bankrupt. They just dropped their, you know, they raised a two billion valuation. They're raising now at four hundred million. They're in a death spiral. I don't know what's going to happen with transportation. I don't. I think people like cars. Honestly, you're locked in. People are driving around LA in cars. Um, um, six, six foot barrier. Maybe I wouldn't, I don't Uber pool is not coming back right away. What about, I take it. The dental profession is also unpredictable. I think dentists will be one of the first people let back in. If you have a toothache, you know how pain, you know, people will kill themselves over a uh, bad enough toothache. Dentists, I think will be literally almost the first people open. So I think Carmen, Didi, if you're a dentist, I think, you're going to be the first. I don't know when it is, but I think you'll be the first one open back up. Would I invest in peer-to-peer lending through platforms like Lending Club? Ooh, no, I wouldn't. You could. I'm not. <laughs> Tell me how that works out for you. Right now, people are going to be defaulting on stuff. I charge 900% interest because that's the only way you're going to get your money back because 99% of people are going to default on those loans. Oh, nah, I'd stay away from that. I mean, unless you know the person you're doing. <laughs> don't be lending out money right now, my friend, unless you have a mafia dude that's going to go collect the money. You got some big dude who's going to go, <laughs> going to go, where's my money? Break some kneecaps. Yeah. Don't lend money to your friends right now. If anything, give money away. It ain't coming back to you. You know, that's generally my rule with lending money. Uh, you got a family member who asked to borrow 500 bucks. Just give it to them. It'll come back. Karma comes around. Uh, so that's a good thing. I'll, I'll come back to some of these, but let me switch topics to just some of the other non-money things because life's not all about money, especially now we see that. Um, giving. I will tell you a little thing. Give 
start giving money every day to a charity online. Don't ask me why, but it has miraculous effects on your financial situation. It, and I'm not even a superstitious guy in many ways. But if you ask me the closest thing I have to a superstition, it's giving money to charity. Every religion talks about it from Islam, Judaism, Christianity, atheists. My grandma's an atheist. She still believes in helping people. Humanism, uh, maybe not Satanism. So this, if you're a Satanist, uh, ignore what I'm about to say. But I think in general, the, a good way, it's almost like a superstitious type of insurance. Be, be generous now. If you got a little bit of money, uh, people got none. Give away a little bit. I did a little thing on my Twitter. You could kind of copy that. You just say, hey, if you got a small bill, I'll Venmo you the money. Even if it's 100 bucks, 150 bucks. Most everybody on this call, we're pretty lucky. We're above average uh, in our opportunities and things. So this is a little in the fourth, the four pillars of the good life. The fourth one is happiness. And also, you know what? If I go down, if I fail, if all my businesses go bankrupt and I diagnose the reason was I gave money, too much money to charity, I feel like that's a good way to go down. And I feel like you'll have a lot less regret. Do you know what I'm saying? So little challenge, just try it. Try it today. I've always seen it somehow. I don't know what it is. Maybe like Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking say, we're all kind of a video game for some advanced life form. They're watching us like some Sims thing. Believe it or not, there's very intelligent uh, physicists who kind of buy into that. And maybe they made a rule in the video game that people who give money to charity get more money back. I don't know. That's my, uh, for those of you who are cynical, that's my best uh, explanation. So happiness, I think through this time, you know, one of the things to do just to stay grounded and happy, um, minimize the news. I was really focused on the news for the first two weeks. And I think that was important to do because you want to be ahead of the game. Me and my business partner, Alex, were really watching the news hardcore in the uh, end of February. Even in February, we were watching it very closely. But now I don't. I don't. It's all the same. Um, and so set a timer. 20 minutes a day is plenty. You're going to catch. And my mom used to tell me, Ty, anything important, someone else will tell you. So um, let other people absorb the, the stress. It, it has a real deleterious effect on your psyche. And if your goal is just to make money, you don't want to be too stressed. Warren Buffett's making a lot of money right now because he's calm and collected because he has $130 billion in cash. So he's going to make better decisions because he's operating from a place of zero stress. He's like, well, as long as I don't get it. And he's also 90 years old. I can tell you, people at 90 years old don't even care if they die. My grandma's 102. She's like, if I die, I die. Like at that age, you resigned yourself, right? So by lowering your stress, you're going to make quality decisions and you must be contrarian now and you must be very, uh, you, you must be prepared when everybody else is fearful, I guess is a calm under pressure is going to be a currency. So if you think of yourself on a one to 10 scale, how calm are you right now? That's pretty predictive. If every one of these Zoom squares, there was a number that I could see your psyche and be like, okay, this person's a four and this person's a 10 calmness and this person's a one, I can pretty much predict one year from now who's going to have made the most money and be the most financially uh, secure. So you really got everything you can do to lower anxiety, you know, through the roof. Uh, so let me switch to the first H, which is health. Um, I'll tell you the best thing you can do, my best health tip for myself, anybody, um, work from your home gym. Don't have a, this is my office, by the way, at this farm. So I'll show you. It's very threadbare. You know why it's threadbare? Cause I don't use this except literally to do conference calls like this. I do. I have a gym that I build out in a little garage. It can be in a separate room. Garage is the best. By the way, here in my garage, my famous Lamborghini video, that garage was my gym. And um, work from a gym because do all your phone calls from the gym, do them between sets, 
Um, use this time to catch up on two things. Sleep. Okay, because you can only push so hard right now on this economy. You can only push so hard on this economy. You're going to have to sit back and see what happens. So I've been sleep trying to sleep 12 hours. My body, I've been pushing my body hard. Try to get up there in the eight, nine, 10 hour things. And, and if you can't do that, take a nap. 18 minute nap is the biggest game changer. Best 18 minutes. What I do is I use Headspace. It's an app, a meditation app. Now you're not, not they'd be very mad if I told you I was doing this. Because what you're supposed to do with Headspace is sit up, cross your legs, and focus for 18 minutes on uh, meditation. What I do is I last about two minutes and fall asleep. And shit, that's better than any meditation I ever have. A nice nap. I'm like, look, meditation is good, but napping is better. Trust me. People have been surviving without meditation. They have not been surviving without good sleep. So I use that app, that Headspace app. I like Headspace. I, the guy's voice is very, he's like a Buddhist Australian monk guy. He's got a good voice. He's very kind of calming, chill voice. Calm is another app. Um, I didn't like Calm as much, personal preference. But so, uh, and I don't own any of those. So this is unbiased, by the way. Headspace, eight, I set my timer for 18 minutes. And the first month, you're only going to fall asleep about half the time or, you know, 60% of the time you give yourself 67 days about how long it takes a person to change a habit and you will fall asleep almost on command. It's insane. Assuming you don't have other underlying major health problems, but then, so I do 18 minute nap and then I do two hours in my gym and here's what I do in my gym. I love these headsets right here, by the way. So these headsets, even though I'm wearing these weird white ones, these I'm just doing to make sure I have extra high quality sound for this conference. But normally I wear these, they do not go in your ears. I started, I was wearing these and then I was on the phone a lot and I got ear infections. I was never again. These go over your ears doop, like that. And people can't really see them. They're called air shocks or something like that. What's the name? No, they're called after shocks. So I go into my gym I connect Aftershocks to my iPhone. I do some sets. The best app I've ever seen for working out is this one right here. I'll show you. It's called J. Well, let me just. Uh, it's called J like jump. E like Edward fit. J E F I T. I think it's free or like 10 bucks. Okay. The second app that I love, these are the two best apps for help. I've, I've tried a lot. By the way, I'm working on a book called Million Dollar Body. I'm getting close to having spent a million dollars trying every therapy, concoction, vitamin, but I've done it all. Dude, and I've been doing it for over five years now. And I've been tracking. I've done about 40 blood tests, really exhaustive ones. And so trying to put together like really good data on what actually works. I'll tell you what will change your life is this app. I'll just tell you, it's called Carb, like carbohydrates, Carb Manager. Carb Manager, it's so good. Track your food. Track your food. I track every meal. Carb Manager has this little, um, you can't see it, but it's a little microphone. You just press it every time you have a meal. One of the problems with tracking your meals is like typing in everything. You just say it verbally. So I, this morning I was like four eggs, one eighth cup broccoli, one ounce cheese, one piece of Ezekiel bread, one third tablespoon butter, and you press it and it enters it all in. So you can see today I'm not, I haven't been eating very well. Let me show you yesterday. Well, I've been eating well, but I haven't eaten that much. Yesterday, my goal is 2,801 calories. I ate 2,990, 236 grams of protein. I'm cutting now. So I have my protein relatively high to not try to not lose muscle. So it's a great app. So three apps. In summary, and I'll, let me type it because it's a lot easier if I share my screen. My three favorite apps for health. Can you guys see this? Apps for health. So napping, and never tell this company that I said this. Napping, head space. Two, food, carb manager 
These are an app. It's, it's green. It's a green app. And then number three, to track your workouts, you use JE Fit. The reason you need to track your workouts is if you've not worked out in a long time, you're going to get heavy too fast and you're going to tear a muscle. Okay. My main thing, if you're over 25, you should only be optimized to not hurt yourself. No, none of us is going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. That day's past for all of us. Maybe Mark who's on here. Um, but it's all about tracking very slowly. I, like I got my bench press. I've been pushing, I bulked up to like 205 pounds. I can bench. I bench like not quite 350, but now as I've cut, I can't bench that much anymore because I've dropped weight and I use that JE fit app to perfectly track. I can look at my last workout. Okay. How much did I do on the bench and just gradually go down. But so in summary here on health, what you should be doing now is catching up. You're at home, catch up on your health. Any, I think anybody who says you need less than eight hours of sleep is just, I think it's insane. Unless you have freak genes like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Donald Trump says he only needs five hours, but he doesn't work out. So, um, eight to 10 hours sleep, one 18 minute nap, track your food for your first time in your life. I can tell you, everybody on this call looks like the average age is, let's say, 40s. You ain't getting enough protein. So your body is going to wither away, the long and short of it. Um, a lot of people argue with you on that, but I can tell you I have one advantage. I've been raising animals on farms since I was 19 years old, and um, it's all about how you feed animals, and protein is the missing link. So try to get your protein, at least the Apple put in a doctor recommended amount of protein, hit that protein marker. So, so track food, women, men, particularly protein. When I was bulking, I was doing 280 grams of protein a day. And it's funny, I have, there's a lot of pseudo experts when it comes to health and a guy that I know, uh, was like, you don't need that much, but he's a skinny dude. And all my buddies that are big, big, big guys, they're like, man, I eat two grams of protein sometimes. So get your protein up during this time, instill new habits, you know? And then lastly, so this is going to sound like a lot, two hours in the office gym. So Two hours in a gym might overwhelm you, but two hours in an office gym to warm your body up to really get in shape six months from now, I'll do a set and then I check my WhatsApps or my business emails for five minutes and I grab a drink of water and then I go back to another set and then I make a phone call to a customer. I get more done in my gym then I will never, I probably never have gone into an office. Last time I went into an office day to day was in 2002 or three. This office gym, I'm so much more productive and I'm killing two birds with one stone. And then lastly, Tom Brady rule of water. He's the, 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 one of the great athletes of all time, half your weight in ounces. So I'm trying to get, and that's pure water, by the way. Don't be counting, you know, coconut water. You can add fluids on top of that. I don't even add in my pre and post workouts, which are mostly water. So for me right now, I'm around 190 something. I'm doing, at least, I drink three bottles that have 33 ounces in them. So I get not in the 90s. And then I get two protein shakes and stuff. So those are my hacks. And I'm telling you, I've tested my blood more than any human on planet earth in the last five years. I'm sure nobody's done that much. Um, I take 40 vials out of my blood, uh, out of my arm four times a year. I used to do it 12 times a year. So I've done stem cell stuff. I've done blood. I like name, you name it. There's almost nothing I haven't done yet. Um, and if there's something I haven't done, tell me about it. I want to try it as long as it's not, you know, chance to kill me. Okay. Let me see the chats. 
Okay, good at peptides. So here's the thing about peptides. <clears throat> Ty, can you just unshare? By the way, a lot of this is yes, yeah. Um, so by the way, a lot of this advice is from people much, 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 much more qualified than me. Um, over the last five years, I've hired four main personal trainers. I have four guys, Presto, Mark Cage, Danny Hester, and a guy named Dan Fine. And they're smart guys. So for example, Danny Hester won Mr. Olympia classic. So he was at 45. That's the hot, most prestigious. That's the Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, Mr. Olympia. So he took, I talked to him three times a week. Even now I virtually train with him. Dan Fine. I mean, this guy was on the cover of muscle and fitness in his prime many, many times. Uh, Presto is a guy that uh, I have him tagged. I'll, I'll share him with you. Um, but he trains a lot of pro athletes. A lot of the NBA guys go straight to him. And then I got a guy named Mark Cage, who's a physical therapist, who literally, I tore a labrum and I tore here. And uh, Danny Hester, Mr. Olympia said, no, go to Mark Cage. You won't need surgery. He'll fix it. And he does deep tissue massage. It's insane. My doctor told me, he's like, you got two choices. You either have surgery or you'll never get strength back. Mark Cage goes, give me 90 days. It'll be painful. And that's, it's gone. It's insane. I had two medical doctors like impossible, impossible, but it's painful. He sticks, he has this little tool and anyway, so going back to this question about peptides, I've asked them about peptides. None of them are that impressed by peptides. So sometimes people talk about peptides, but I'm not saying they're bad for you, but that's just what my guys are. say. Simple man, water, hit the weights. I can go more complicated, but I don't know if people want to hear this. I think you should cycle every three months. So three months, you should be light cut. Then you should do three months heavy cut. Then three months light bulk. And then last three months heavy bulk, especially for men, but women too. Your body is not meant to stay the same way. If you're staying at the same weight, you are not. Your DNA imperative is very different. Our ancestors changed weights. They had no refrigerators. You think they ate the same in the winter or the summer? You're meant to cut weight and go up. I went up to 205. I'll probably cut down to like 175. Play with your body. It, you will not hurt yourself. Just do it real slow. Don't lose like four pounds a week and stuff. That's where people mess up. If you're vegan, then you just need nothing wrong with vegan. I mean, I think, I think vegetarian makes more sense or pescatarian, but some people have reasons they want to be vegan supplement with two protein shakes a day, two vegan. I actually own a vegan protein shake line called lean 67, but I'm not pushing it on you because I think we're actually sold out. So you, you can't even buy it right now, but I drink it. It's hemp protein. It has, uh, I get about 40 grams. You want to try to get like 80 to hundred grams. By the way, it depends. I'm assuming that people that are my weight, um, Good app for weightlifting routines. JFit is great. Also, P90X is a good one to start with for insanity. Time my wife used the same meditation technique. You fall asleep. I like that. Uh, okay. Kimberly said, are you going to talk about the third pillar? So hopefully I'm not boring you. Sometimes people only want to talk about business and I'm fine, but doing that. But the third pillar is love, friends, family, romance. Um, and I'll just say this throughout the time that you're in now, you're going to find out who your real friends are. Somebody who never DMs you, texts you or WhatsApps you during this cr crisis. Either it doesn't mean they're not good friends, but they're certainly not your closest friends. I would not crucify your acquaintances for not messaging you during this, but anybody who's a business partner, a close friend, family member who doesn't chime in, you should keep mental track of that not from a spite standpoint, but from a standpoint of just trying times, tell the truth, you know, people lie, but, but, uh, numbers don't. So someone says they like you and they text you once a year, they're probably lying and the numbers don't support love. You know what I mean? So, um, I think the most important thing and what maybe, I don't know that I'm the most qualified, I'm not married, so I'm not sure I'm the most qualified to speak on romance, but uh, what I would speak on on the third pillar is, a, is the human aspect. And Sigmund Freud said, by the way, great book to read, write this down. All humans should read this multiple times. 
It's called Civilization and Its Discontents. Um, it's by Sigmund Freud. Now, some people think Sigmund Freud is a discredited uh, psychoanalyst. People are morons who said that. I've never read anybody smarter than Sigmund Freud. Okay. Now, he was wrong a lot about a lot of things. He did like to prescribe cocaine. Uh, they didn't know it was bad for you back then. And he was right. It cured depression. <laughs> so uh, even there, in some of his prescriptions, they're not politically, hey, you got a depressed friend, you give them cocaine. They ain't going to be depressed for a certain period of time. When, the, when it dies off, they might be. But anyway, so civilization is discontents. And I keep it on my phone. I'm a real big fan of iBooks. I keep a lot of stuff on my iBooks because it's easier to take notes. So if you read a physical book, I usually buy the iBooks. You know how you always put little marks in the book? Well, that's pointless because you lose the book when you move and you can't search it. So I just, when I'm reading a book, I have my iBooks. When I, I highlight the iBook, now it's backed up on my phone. If my phone crashes, it's backed up. My notes are backed up. And I can search the terms to quickly find quotes. So that's a little side note for you. Um, let me pull this up. So I have civilization is discontent. I think it's like $1. It will be the greatest $1 you have ever spent in your life. I have this one. It looks kind of, well, okay. So I want to refer you. There's only one chapter that I think you should read. The rest is kind of complicated. And so you want to read. Chapter, uh, two. chapter two. Yeah. Chap yeah. It's the second on iBooks. Let me, so I'm going to read you a quote that I think is really relevant to people. So I can go in here, my notes, you can see my highlights. Here we go. Okay. So it's in the very beginning of the book. The most important part is chapter two, like James said. Just focus on chapter two of civilization's discontent. Some of it gets very ethereal. Okay. <clears throat> suffering comes from three quarters, three areas from your own body, right? The, he calls it the, the decay and dissolution of our body every day past 18 years old. Our bodies are slowly decaying. Number two, from the outer world. It's interesting what he says from the outer world, which can rage against us with the most powerful and pitiful, pitiless forces of destruction who can think of a outer force that's now attacking humanity, so to speak, COVID-19. So the second source is tornadoes, hurricanes, plagues, viruses. But listen to what he says. Suffering, the third place suffering comes from is from our relations with other people. The unhappiness, which has this last origin AKA from other people, we find perhaps more painful than any other. So most of your problems are going to end up being people problems. And so one of the tragedies in the school system is not learning how to accurately and quickly read people and then keeping out the ones that are what a, what a psychologist calls exploitative. So the main trait you're looking to be able to read in people is exploitativeness. So exploitativeness, my mentor, Dr. David Buss, kind of described it this way. Exploitativeness is a inability to you scratch their back, they scratch your back the same amount. We've all had a friend, maybe you help them move. They call you, hey man, I'm moving this weekend. Can you wake up early at seven in the morning, show up at my apartment complex on your Saturday morning and help me move? And you agree to it and you move, help them move. A year later, you call that friend and say, hey, I'm moving. Can you come help me Saturday morning? Oh, man, I would, but I promised my girlfriend that I would walk the dog or something. That's exploitativeness. So the actual technical term for it is like reciprocal altruism. They have different scientific terms. Um, it, it, it's, it's like a teeter-totter. It doesn't balance out. You help them more than they help you. So your number one goal, if I was training myself, six years old, 
going back in a time machine and coaching myself, I'd be like, Ty, what are the signs of exploitativeness? Because, you know, there's a lot of people on the Zoom call. One of you is about to make a million dollars and somebody's going to take it from you. Somebody you know. They're going to sue you. They're going to defraud you. They're going to take it out of your bank account. I guarantee you someone in this group, a group of 30 or 40 people, there's zero chance that there's not 10, 20% of you somehow inexplicably, maybe unknowingly attached to a highly exploitative person. I've seen it. I've seen it. I have seen it over and over again. Uh, the wealthier you get, the more it happens. Um, a lawyer of mine in LA said, Ty, he handles these type cases. He said, Ty, I know of not one high profile businessman in this city that doesn't have pending lawsuits against him in one form, form or fashion. He's like, I, he goes, Ty, I represented every high profile person you ever seen. Like they all have shit going on because more money, more problems. More, you can't exploit somebody who has nothing to give. But as you guys become more successful, uh, this tendency in others will rise. So you have to be good at finding exploitative people. So there's three main types of exploitative behavior. And I'll kind of end with this and maybe I'll answer a few more questions. The first type is narcissism. Now, what people don't understand about narcissism, they think of it, there's seven types of narcissists and people don't know this. Only one of them is vanity. And we traditionally think vanity, right? The person who looks in the mirror all the time. That is only one of seven forms. Another form, for example, is self-sufficiency. Did you know actually scientists classify high self-sufficiency as a mental illness? Somebody who thinks they can do everything on their own. I get that with employees sometimes. I'll have somebody. It's their first week on the job. They go into an important part of my website and change it all. And it like destroys sales. And I call them and I'm like, yo, bro, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I didn't want to bother you. I figured I would just figure it out on my own. I'm like, no, ask me. Don't be self-sufficient right now. So he's unknowingly been exploitative and harmed my business. So you want to, but that's, by the way, the least dangerous of the forms of narcissism. The most dangerous, um, there's one called uh, superiority authority. That's really common in the modern world, especially with social media entrepreneurs. So people who have no credentials, but are still, we all know somebody who has infinite confidence in something they just learned how to do yesterday. And you're like, hey, the scientists call that Dunning-Kruger. Two scientists, Dunning and Kruger, did a study on why are smart people not confident about their opinions and idiots are highly, uh, think of politics, idiots who have ne couldn't even balance their own checkbook are like, I know exactly what economic policy will be best for America. I'm like, bro, you can't even fucking save a thousand dollars, but you're a hundred percent sure which economic policy is good for 320 Americans in a massively complex society. Let me get this straight. That is called superiority authority narcissism. So you got to watch for that. Um, here's the good news about nar narcissists. It's the most common, and I'm not talking about narcissistic personality disorder. That's like narcissism on steroids. If you ever bump into one of those people, that's like Ted Bundy was a narcissist. Um, uh, he had narcissistic personality disorders. A lot of the serial killers have that along with psychosis, uh, with psychopathy and stuff. So for each person on this call, the simplest way to identify, believe it or not, a narcissist is easily offended people. So be very careful. Think, do a mental inventory right now. People close to you in your life, they could be working for you, with you, you could be married to them, you could be dating them, you could be befriending them. Anybody who doesn't eat, I, I like to use the term jolly. In general, jolly people are not narcissistic, okay? Now, forget your politics. Donald Trump is a classic narcissist, okay? I'm not saying he's a bad president or a good one. I, I don't even comment on that. But even he knows he's a narcissist. I heard him give a talk where he's like, I'm pretty narcissistic. Donald Trump needs to react to everything. And part of that's worked very well for him. So by the way, some narcissism is functional just to be the reason that our DNA over the last 10,000 generations has perpetuated narcissism is it has a purpose. Scientists call that functional. 
So any non-functional behavior slowly gets pushed out of the if you believe in evolution. Narcissism persists because it's helpful. I've never met a pro athlete that's not a massive narcissist, but they have the skills to back it. I had a guy who worked for me. He was, I would play basketball in backyard. The one time he pissed me off so much. He would talk the most trash. He was the worst basketball player ever, but he had the confidence of like my friend, Chris Paul, who's like, I'm going to be in the hall of fame. And finally I was like, why are you so confident? He's like, dude, I could have played pro. And I was like, did you play college? He's like, no. I was like, did you play high school? No. I'm like, but that is a, that is a, he was a jolly guy, but he was miscalibrated and therefore he was exploitative. I ended up letting him go slowly. Be careful of letting exploitative people out of your fast life instantly because they might retaliate. Your best bet, there's an episode of The Office. I forget what season, but a guy is going to be fired. Oh, Andy Bernard's going to be fired. And he, and so the boss invites him in. Andy Bernard comes in and he goes, David, before you talk, I wanted to tell you, I'm tendering my resignation. And David Wallace is like, I was about to fire this guy. And he just resigned. So now I don't have to pay him the severance. So my hope for you is that you figure out a very subtle way to remove the narcissist from your life. If you just tell them that you were on this talk and you heard about narcissism and dark triad traits, and you're going to need to let them go, it's going to, they're going to retaliate. So don't. So I'm giving a huge disclaimer. You want to do it so subtly, they never know that they left your life. I've done all kinds of things to get rid of weird people. The best thing is I like to move every once in a while. People are like, are you in California? I'm like, no, I live, in, I live on the East Coast now. Part of it is for business reasons things, but literally 50% is now all the annoying people who want me to do something for them in LA. I'm like, oh, I would, but I'm in New York right now. I'm in Virginia. It's the art of the subtle exit, I will call that. The second kind of exploitative is also pretty common. It's called Machiavellianism. It's somebody who is two-faced. To your face, they're nice. They talk behind your back. Now, Narcissism is genetic. Believe it or not, Machiavellianism is um, not genetic. It's environmental, almost all of it. Narcissism is like very high correlation with your genes. By the way, if you want to know if you're a narcissist, just ask yourself, were your mom or dad a narcissist? If the answer is yes, you probably have strong narcissism. It's very heritable. Um, but Machiavellian, so people who have been bullied in life or abused in childhood, you need to, and this is so hard for me to say, because it's like, oh, Ty, are you saying somebody had a hard upbringing that you shouldn't have them in your life? No, it's not that simple. But what I'm saying is this bad childhood, um, it has a hell of repercussions on people. And so do not have everybody in your life who's like, I have the most fucked up childhood. Like you want no more than 33%. You want some people they are like, are your parents divorced? Nope. Are they happily married? Yep. Look for shit. Were you ever abused? Were you molested as a child? Were you, were you bullied? Blah, blah. You can't, don't have all your friends say yes to this is what I'm saying. If anybody here struggles with anxiety, the, the craziest thing about anxious people, and there's also science to this, is called associative or sort of matching. Anxious people have only anxious friends around them. And I'm going, the only known cure for, for anxiety besides heavy drugs and maybe meditation is changing your environment to not having anxious people around you. So what I'm trying to say is if you had kind of a fucked up childhood, I didn't have a good childhood. I'm sure to surround myself with people who had a hundred times better childhood. Don't think that people heal as much as you think. Don't think, and, and some people do, but you know, when I was young, my wrist got cut on glass, never fully healed. Scar tissue fibrosis boy is a real thing. And Machiavellian is, is like scarring of the brain and they're insecure, unstable. Do not have only people with fucked backgrounds in your life. Okay. Just don't no more than 33% if you can pull it off, marry somebody way more normal than you business partner. Like Alex, my business partner, before we became business partner, like Alex, are your parents married? Oh yeah. Are they happy? 
Oh yeah. Uh, was your grandparents married? Oh yeah. Like, do you get along with your mom and dad? Yeah. Were you beat up as a kid? No, not really. Were you abused again? No. So I had more traumatic upbringing. So I'm like, I want somebody like that because he balances me out. And this is straight dope. I'm telling you that Machiavelli, I've tested more people with psychometric tests than any human in history, even more than Sigmund Freud. I tested like three, 400,000 people in the last two years. So I can tell you what I'm telling you is from mass data across 150 countries. And I learned a lot from Dr. David Buss, who was the head. Well, he's my mentor. He's on my advisory board. He's the head of Harvard Evolutionary Psychology. So this is really kind of accurate stuff, unfortunately. The third kind of exploitative behavior is called psycho psychopathy. It's very rare, so don't worry about it too much. Men like to call women psychos. Uh, one thing women should know, there's basically no women psychopaths, statistically. There's a few. There's almost no female psychopaths. Women are not psychopaths. Let me give you an example. Um, women don't kill strangers. Okay? There's been a thousand, if you go to Wikipedia, there's a thousand serial killer men listed. I'm sorry, a thousand serial killers. I think 998 are men and two are women. There have been a few psychopath women, but it's just rare. It's so rare. And um, women don't kill strangers. Serial killers kill strangers. So like women will kill, kill you if you are married to them. Women can be very dangerous. It's just you have to have a relationship with them first before they want to kill you. Um, men, this is the problem with men, men will kill a baby that's just walk for no reason. Women don't do that. So psychopathy, you need to watch mostly in men. God help you if you have real psychopaths in your life. They tend to be really charming. So do narcissists. That's one problem. It's hard to differentiate them. I run into very few psychopaths. So it's a word that people use a lot. Um, I ha I'll tell you this. At my part, I had a party at my house two years ago. I like to give my quiz to everybody. I built a quiz that's like the best quiz because I took Texaco score and uh, NPI, Mach 4, all these ones. Scientists are not good at internet marketing. So I took all of their quizzes and I put them in one quiz. This girl, I met her and I could tell she was a little weird, but like more than weird, like something was off. So I had her take my quiz. She got a 90. I'm psychopathy. I've never seen a woman get 90. So we were out of my basketball court. There's a hundred people there, like kind of close to us. And I just choked. I was like, oh, you've killed somebody before. And she got so quiet. I thought she was going to laugh. She got so quiet that I changed the subject because I was like, I think I just hit a hot spot. But my point is, focus on narcissism and Machiavellian. Stop calling people psychopaths. Start focusing by the way, women tend to be uh, not psychopaths, but they, I, women, I'll tell you this, this pro, I don't know if you're allowed to talk about men and women anymore tomorrow, but from testing 400,000 people, there's one thing that women have, you could call it worse, but much more prevalent in women, anxiety. Women, the, the, what I've seen among 400,000 people is women have anxiety issues. Men do too. But men have anxiety plus a whole bunch of other issues. Um, there are women narcissists, but a female narcissist, in my experience, is less exploitative. A male narcissist is a trouble. Male narcissist is like Adolf Hitler, man. There ain't no female version of Adolf Hitler. Women are complicated. That's all I'll say. Watch men and women equally. But I was just saying the fear thing of like death and stuff, it's all men. It's all, unless you live in Thailand where women, if you cheat, they cut off your wiener while you're sleeping. I don't know if you saw this, but there's like a whole emerging field in Thailand of doctors who, who reattach your penis to your body because there's like 20 a year. And I was like, you know what? If I ever marry a Thai girl, I'm sleeping on my stomach, boy. Do not sleep on your back naked. That's all I can tell you. Roll over. So uh, I hope that doesn't happen. Okay, before I leave here, last question. What did I call that test? If you want to take my test, you just go to tylopez.com slash quiz. But you can also Google Hexaco, H-E-X-A-C-O. 
my quiz is it's not i didn't invent the quiz by the way so i did nothing but compiled the most scientific quizzes probably.com slash quiz give that it's free give it to every employee well be careful with employees if you're in california give it to every friend acquaintance before people are your business partner give it to them before you go on a date give it to them I, i i have seen and by the way like I said, mental illness is male and female. Um, I have seen some women that are insanely, well, like I said, the girl killed somebody. And I've seen men that I would, I've, I've had people that I get that quiz. I walk out the door right there. I'm in a restaurant. I'm just like, I gotta go. Something came up, just exit. And let me give you a really good book. I haven't talked. Okay. It's called the H. Let me put it in the chat. This is an insane short book by a really, really respected psychologist, or it's called psych, uh, psychometrics, but he's a psychologist. The age factor of personality. Right here. Read the age factor of personality 10 times before you die. It's so good of a book. It's by the founder of the Hexaco quiz. Let me read you something funny about from the age factor about how to deal with people who are wacky in your life. Okay. It's the, <clears throat> so he defines it in this book as low H. I called it exploitativeness, same thing. So what do you do when you realize that someone is very exploitative? First of all, do not get carried away. It's probably not a good idea to proclaim your diagnosis to them. Rule number one, do not tell them you diagnosed them as a psychopath. Okay. And it's definitely not a good idea to undertake any vigilante style action against that person. I've done this quiz and then tried to psychoanalyze people. It's never ended well. It's ended poorly, but never well. People who have these issues don't want to hear it. The best advice is to simply limit your interaction with people who are exploitative. Do not choose them as romantic partners. Do not choose them as business partners. Do not choose them as tennis partners, as bridge players. Stay away from them. Now he goes, he says, now what happens if you're the exploitative person? <laughs> That's a whole nother, I can't cure. I, I can't, I'm not a doctor to cure. Run for your life. There's so many exploitative people in this world now. I don't know if it's gotten worse somehow magically, but in, in entrepreneurs are 10 times more likely to be exploitative in my experience. The most dishonest group of people, not necessarily dishonest, exploitative is probably entrepreneurs in my life experience. Maybe there's prison would be worse. So, but I haven't been to prison, but it's my dad went to prison. He's like, there ain't no friends in prison. And um, entrepreneurs is a little bit that way. <laughs> so do not have only entrepreneur friends. I have lots of friends who are in other fields. I have friends who have nine to five jobs. I have friends that are farmers, uh, you know. Don't don't just hang out with e-com entrepreneurs. Okay, how do you get people to take the quiz without them knowing? You know what, Michelle? Believe it or not, people are so narcissistic. You're like, hey, do you want to talk about you? Hey, I got something we can talk more about you. I've never, ever, well, maybe I should say out of, uh, let's say I've had 5,000 people. I've been doing this for over a decade. Let's say I've had 3,000 people I've personally in person I've had one maybe that wouldn't take it. And if they won't take it, run for your lives. That's a classic sign of Machiavellianism is highly secretive people. Be very careful of highly secretive people. Highly secretive people, it's a classic sign of Machiavellianism. That's one prop. Cryptocurrency, by the way, prop may ha- is the only industry that has more people with mental illness that I've experienced than entrepreneurs. It's like, entrepreneur subset and then among crypto now i know some great crypto people so i'm not generalizing but i've never seen more people as a group like if you do a cryptocurrency conference and there's three thousand cryptocurrency people there might be 2900 people with serious mental illness in there i wish it wasn't that way because i like the idea of crypto but that's why i talk less about crypto the community's too fucking weird it's like i don't want to deal with people who have i'm like hey guys get some help man Get, go to a therapist. You, you, I know you were bullied. I know life is tough, man, but you got to move on. Okay. Open Psychometrics. Yeah, they're, Open Psychometrics is a website. LSRP. That LSRP, that is the um, psychopathy test. Don't test people for psychopaths unless they're men. Um, 
Okay. Talks about reading a book a day. Um, for starters, read through a book a day. Start as a beginner. Read through a different book every day. Five pages, one page, two sentences. Just build the habit. It's kind of like if you want to get in shape, you just go into the gym if you don't know what you're doing and do five push-ups for a first week, build, instill the habit. Then you go to eight push-ups and 10. And the next thing you know, you can do 50 push-ups and your body starts to change. Start very small with books. Books is like mental bodybuilding. Hi, where can we get more of your wisdom? I'm not sure if I have wisdom, uh, but uh, which of my programs should I join? I mean, my 67 step program, we wanted to join. Um, I'm, I've got a new one called 12 Foundations that I'm almost done with. But anyway, um, okay. Psychology of Love is a good read. Yeah, Love, there's a, a, a book called Attachment. Read Attachment by, what is her name? So Attachment Issues, if you're talking about romance, the most important quiz after the tylobin.com slash quiz one is to do an attachment quiz. There's three types of attachment styles. There's anxious, secure, and um, avoidant. If you've had a tough time in love, um, it's almost always an attachment style, which usually gets fashioned in your brain under three years old. So you don't remember it. Um, you know, so I'm a guy, so I date women, so I can only speak from that experience, but there's certain women that if you don't like them, they like you more. Okay. That's actually a mental problem. That's called avoidance syndrome. And it's not always a clinical level where it's so high that you're insane, but women or men who only like people who don't show affection back, that's called avoidant and it's nasty. And um, it's hard to completely change, but you can work on it a little bit. Um, people who are always uh, jealous, people who are always concerned that their love is not reciprocated, that's anxious style. So about 25% of the population is avoidant. 25% is anxious and 50% is what's called secure. It's the simplest mathematical formula. No matter what you are, only marry a secure. So if you're an avoidant, marry a secure. If you're anxious, marry a secure. If you're secure, marry a secure. Um, if you want to have a good life. If you like, like to have a dramatic life, then ignore everything I've ever said. You can marry the girl that killed somebody that was at my party. I can probably find her phone number. If you want to have a life with a lot of fireworks, it wouldn't be boring. You may not make it to the end of your days, but, um, so yeah, avoidant. There is a book. It's called attached. It's about read that. It's a badass book. It's the only attached about love. Let me look up the damn maybe. Okay. I'm going through these questions. Ty, it's not boring. It's awesome. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm not too boring. What's a good quit drinking hook during the recession? James, are you still on here? Yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. Um, okay. A quick, going back to business, quick, quick drinking hook during the recession. Well, drinking, I mean, I would say percent. what I've been, what I've been telling people is this while you're at home, double down on yourself, all the things you've been trying, all the bad habits you've been trying to bake, all the skills you've been trying to do, do right now. You're stuck at home. So if you've been a damn, been drinking too much, now you have time to literally read, focus, go through James' program. So many things. It's the same way I was saying about lifting weights or doing P90X or cutting weight by tracking your food. Man, you, all of us have been procrastinating on that stuff for a decade. Now's your chance. So that, that's my best hook right now. I mean, you can all, always also a scientific hook. For example, people who smoke are the one 14 times more likely to die from this coronavirus. And alcohol is an immune system destroyer. I mean, for me, the number one thing that destroys two things that kill my immune system and I get sick. If I get these two things right, I never get sick. Enough sleep and um, alcohol, boy. Alcohol makes you weak. It's in, like we lift weights and then you drink a lot. You, you, your bench press will drop 40 pounds, you know? So I would come at it like, hey, immune system killer. So let's fix that so you don't die of Corona. That won't get approved on Facebook ads, but that'd be a damn good hook. Want to not die? Do this. 
Uh, I'm just reading through the last comments. Best three mentor box courses to look at right now. <laughs> I love the one. I think Reed Hoffman has a good one in there. He's the founder of LinkedIn. I think a good one is Guns, Germs, and Steel to, to get a historical understanding of it's very pertinent right now, Guns, Germs, and Steel. You want a Pulitzer Prize for that. Um, he's in Mentor Box. And um, what's a third one I like? I think Ariana Huffington has a good one in there too. Sorry, I love Pillar. Do you have any references or resources you could share to help get an e-commerce business up? And Justin is asking about get e-com. Here's the thing. If you're going to do e-com of a physical product, use Shopify. That's it. Just keep it real simple. Don't use WordPress. Don't use your own software. If you're going to sell a physical product, use Shopify. I do not own Shopify. I wish I did. So I'm telling you an unbiased. Every business I have that sells a physical product, we use Shopify. Um, if you're selling a electronic product, now it becomes confusing. Because some people like click funnels. I use my own software. There, there's uh, Learnable. There's so many things. So the good news is if you're going to sell a physical stuff, product, just Shopify. There's so many videos on how to get Shopify. Go to YouTube. Go to Shopify's help. You can get... I mean, I have an e-com course you can look at. I think we have a $1 trial on it. It's actually pretty good. Um, and it's like 7 bucks a month to 9 bucks a month. So you can do mine or you can search around. Um, how is coronavirus any different than past viruses? The past and we're not forever. Again, Gatano, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to speak on what I'm going to tell you is that the fear instilled by this virus is going to, I think for every one month we're in quarantine, it's a 10X. It'll be 10 months before people psychologically recover. If this thing goes a year, it'll be a permanent 10 year. It'll be a whole generation's understanding. So if this thing stops in two weeks, we may be back in business in 20 weeks which would be four or five months by the end of summer. If this thing persists, big people, God help us if a world leader dies, stuff like that. People aren't going to forget this. And here's the scary thing. 1918 influenza came back three times. So the problem, I think we live in a new world now. I think, who knows, this might've been a Chinese, this might've be a biological weapon that got out. Nobody knows. Million theories. What I'm telling you is, there's a lot of people on planet Earth. There's never been this many people on planet Earth. And I, I know this from having a simple farm. I've got 700 acres here. If I stick too many cows in one pasture, parasite load goes through the roof. And so as long as population, I think this is a new reality for humans. They're projecting we're going to go to 10 billion humans. My grandma's 102. When she was born, there was 1 billion people on the planet. In her lifetime, we may go to, well, certainly 8 billion. So I think that's what I'm saying. Double down on e because this is here to stay. Whether the coronavirus is the one, there's going to be something. We're not going to go another hundred years without something. And you know what? Next time people are going to freak out. So the next virus that comes from whatever, Guantanamo Bay virus, people are going to instantly abandon. Let's say your grandma died or your mom died with the last coronavirus. What are you going to do? You're going to instantly quarantine yourself. You're not going to go grocery shopping. So build a grocery, build food delivery. You're not going to buy your, you know, you're going to buy everything online. You get, Zoom is going to be a good business. Virtual coaching is virtual lawyer. You can't be a virtual dentist, but if I was a dentist, um, I, I don't know, maybe mobile dentist. I don't even know if anybody's ever thought of that. Dentist to your door. I know it's hard with the equipment, but stranger things have been done. So you got to think out of the box. I don't see this deaccelerating totally, no matter what, it, even if the virus disappears tomorrow. I just don't see, I, I, by the way, a lot of companies I think are gone. I think, I don't know, even now, I don't know that many of, I, <clears throat> probably the most powerful investment banker I know, personally, he called me a week ago. He said, Ty, he, this guy, when he called you, by the way, he never calls people. He never calls me. So when he called me, I picked the phone up immediately. I was doing something else. I saw his name is Mike. This is his first name. I answer the phone instantly. He goes, he calls me for 30 seconds and hangs up. He goes, I want you to know 
come August, I think 60, 60 major brands will be bankrupt, ready for you to buy. Cause we, we, me and Alex try to buy there. He said, get ready, baby. This thing going to be nasty. So, um, Somebody else is sharing their screen. I don't know who that is. Maybe that's oh, you, no, Scott. Can you not share your screen? Just stop. I'm not sure why. Here we go. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Last thing. I'm gonna jump off here. Are audiobooks good? Yes. Get in that. Remember, two hour office gym. Put the put the aftershocks on. Make your phone calls. Get a little workout in. Follow. There's good workouts on YouTube. There's good workouts you can pay for. Keep it real simple. Do body weight stuff. And then, listen, hey, call people. Oh, I think phone sales is going to be big. Build your phone sales team for your product. People will answer the phone more now. Um, I'm a super slow reader. Good. Audio, audio, audio. What's the future of youth sports look like? Yeah, I don't know. Video game sports. I don't know what. Esports is going to be big. Look, we're going to go back. We're not going to be quarantined permanently. We couldn't support it. We would cease to exist as a civilization. We don't have the infrastructure. Things are going to come back. What I'm saying is not everything's going to come back and it's going to come back to a lesser effect. So that's your opportunity. 47 depression, uh, recessions in American history. And the first one was right after the war of 1776, the Revolutionary War. Three years later, there were four years later, there was a recession. They happened every four years in the 1800s or the recession. There was two in the 1890s. But I want you to know, out of recessions, from new technology and improved world and massive wealth for people who adapt. If you look at the wealthiest people in American history, Rockefeller is at the top. John D. Rockefeller. He started 1865, his big break during the Civil War. But post-Civil War, you had a depression in America due to Reconstruction in the South. He built his business. There was two, Carnegie's the second richest person in history. 1890s, he created a lot of his wealth, Carnegie Steel. J.P. Morgan was coming out of the early, there was two recessions in the first 10 years of the 1900s. I think it was 1901 and 1907. Um, J.P. Morgan rose to massive power. Steel power, J.P. Morgan is still the most powerful investment bank in many ways, Goldman, J.P. J. So this is your chance. And if you can't do it now, and you can't make your move now, you're probably never gonna be able to make your move. Does that make sense? So maybe with that, I'll say when others are fearful, be conservatively excited. Now you should not be overboard and we don't want to be excited at other people's loss. But you know what? The world's been stupid in many ways. Do you think it's been good that Harvard University has charged people or, or NYU Business School has been charging people $30,000 a year for a subpar business degree? I don't think it's good world. So I'm glad they're disrupted. I'm glad all their school, because now it's an opportunity for people to have alternative education, new world. Our grandkids will look back at the prehistoric things that we've done in the 2010 to 2020 decade. And what changes the world is big events that force everybody to rethink everything. So the reason I say be conservatively excited is Maybe you've seen something wrong in the world. Maybe you've seen a structural problem in the medical system, in the insurance business, in the restaurant, in the food system. I see problems in the food system that are about to be exposed. The way we raise animals is lowers the immune system of cattle, sheep, chickens, pigs. And probably our next big virus is going to come out of animals. Well, we know that's where this one came from. So, for me, I want to change the food system. I want to change the education system. So change. Now's your time. If you ever thought about changing the world, and the beauty is if you do it right, the world will repay you. I think one of the, one of the Beatles once said, give the world bread and uh, she will always feed you. Give value to the world right now. And there's monetary potential, you know, reputational growth you'll have everything this is this is your chance so i think i think you should be moderately excited um minus the cost of human suffering that's never we don't want to be excited that people are dying and um but we want to know that out of that we'll create a world ideally where less people will die the next time this thing comes around so you know what's the gandhi thing be the change you want to see in the world i don't know if i would 
say that exactly. I would say make the change. Launch the change that you want to see. Launch it. Right now, it's easier than ever. I'll give you five business tools you should know. Maybe three. Four. Shopify. For your email, use Clavio. That's what we're using. I'm giving you insider stuff that I don't share that much. Clavio. It's a great email tool. Build your email list. Attentive for your text list. Attentive. It's a venture-funded company, meaning they give you good deals on texting. So those three, start with those three. Shopify, Clavio, Attentive. Three simple tools. 10 years ago, if you want to start an e-com business, you'd be like me. I started building my software in 06. I spent $8 million building it. And now I see people can use Shopify, Attentive, Clavio for like 200 bucks a month. So never been a quick, a better, easier time to launch now. So was that helpful, James, I hope? Yes, thank you so much. Off. Ty. Yeah, thank you, mate. I so appreciate your time. I'm just going to read out a couple of things here. Mike says, thank you, Ty. I appreciate you taking the time with us. Kimberly says, thank you so much. Thank you. Keith says, thank you. Mark says, thank you, Ty, for this awesome talk. Really appreciate the wisdom shared. Brad, Brad says, thank you, Ty. Great info and very inspiring too. Um, Melissa says, you added massive value. Uh, thank you. Really great. So I'll, I'll just um, unmute everyone now. If you want to just give um, uh, Ty a... Uh, <laughs> Round of applause just to say thank you. Just unmute yourself. Thank you, Ty. Woo! I appreciate it. Well, we'll talk again in a year or whatever, and I want to hear the stories of people rocking and rolling. Good time to start. All right? Thanks. I'm going to head off, so I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Ty. Bye. 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 So there you go. There was Ty Lopez. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. If you like this episode, please do share it. Send me a DM, share it with someone on your Facebook, subscribe to the uh, James Swanick Show podcast, which you can find on iTunes. Subscribe, subscribe rather to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, there'll be more episodes coming out. Great to see you again and I will see you soon.